Good evening, everyone. This is Julie Hedges, and welcome to the January 2021 edition of Cosmic Conversations with Julie Hedges, a Star Nation's live stream show. I'm really, really glad to be here with all of you who are coming in to the chat room. Um, I appreciate having you here on the third Monday of every month to talk about what is on our hearts, to talk about what matters um, from the stars to the earth plane to the lower worlds, everything that we need to explore this universe that is in, through, and around all of us. So welcome. I'm excited about starting the year off in 2021. It's uh, going to be another um, another wild ride, it could be. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. But our focus tonight is on gratitude. That's what Spirit gave to me to talk about is gratitude. So I'm going to invite you to share this and like it if it feels right to you to do so. Sharing on your timeline, sharing in a group, sharing in messenger to someone who might need to know a little bit more about gratitude from the Akashic perspective. So I'm going to talk about gratitude from the Akashic records going to open the records tonight so you're going to get to see how I do that so thank you Rob for sharing it into the um, Star Nations live stream um, group page and also to the Cosmic Conversations page where we are now and then to my personal timeline and also we are simulcasting on YouTube so if you are joining us on YouTube live, you can put your comments there and um, my great producer Rob will be able to see those and Rochelle has joined us tonight. Hello, ma'am. Thank you for for being here today and thank you for all of you who are joining us here for a cosmic conversation. Um, I wanted to start off this year. Um, with a real solid subject and my my team, um, my spiritual team has said that I needed to start off with gratitude. And I'm going to start off also with um, opening the Akashic Records and talking a little bit about the Akashic Records. Thank you, Rochelle, for sharing. And Rob is over there in YouTube land. Um, and now he's in Facebook land, so he's uh, joining us. Thank you. Thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you, Rochelle, for coming on and sharing as well. The Akashic Records, what, what are they? Um, what do they do? Um, the word Akasha means ether. It's like the it's like the energetic primordial soup before something is created. So you can think of it as that space of uh, Abraham Hicks. If you know about the vortex, the vortex of creation, where everything you want and everything you're desiring is already created in there, and then you just bring it out into the real world. So the Akasha is that space of energetic creation. And we all have an Akashic record. It's the record of our soul, our soul's wisdom, our soul's experience, our soul's mastery from every single lifetime. So if you are one who believes that we come to this earth plane to um, learn and grow and share our wisdom as we go along, um, then you can understand the Akashic perspective as holding all of the soul's wisdom from all of the 
human experiences that the soul, your soul, my soul has experienced throughout all of those timelines. Or if it, you are more interested in just this particular uh, timeline as your human self, the soul has its own richness and vibrance and truth because our human bodies need to sleep. <laughs> we, we spend a significant amount of our time sleeping, but the soul is going on and learning. Maybe the soul is going to the star nations to learn or to do astral travel or to do healing work. We have special gifts and um, work for our soul to learn and grow and to share. So our soul is constantly doing that. So the Akashic Records keeps a record of that as well. And so I'm going to open the Akashic Records tonight. I'm going to open my own Akashic Records using the pathway prayer process that was developed by Dr. Linda Howe. She is from Chicago and she has um, written many books, but she teaches how to connect to this wisdom through her process called the pathway prayer. Now, there are many ways to connect and tap into the Akashic Records, many. Um, this is just the way that I have been trained and certified in. So if someone uh, wants to work with me on an Akashic Records session to get a deeper sense of their own soul's wisdom about a certain topic, then I use the pathway prayer. But there are many other ways to do it. I don't even know all of the ways that you can connect into the Akashic Records, but I use the pathway prayer process. And we have Ellen here tonight. Thank you for joining us, Ellen. And feel free to put your um, greeting in the comments. We'd love to, to see you come on and um, say hello to you. I'm going to get a little drink of water before I get started. I've taken an allergy pill um, today because, well, I've needed it, and so it makes my throat a little bit dry. And I appreciate your understanding. Hello, Bill, my friend Bill from way up north. I appreciate you being on tonight. So I'm going to use the pathway prayer process, and Linda says that it needs to be read. So I'm actually going to be reading this um, the way she teaches and understands is that when you read it, you speak the words out loud, but you're also engaging your eyes. So you're engaging more than one sense and saying it very, very deliberately. So that's why she wants her practitioners and um, teachers to read it. So I'm going to open the Akashic Records, my own Akashic Records, and let the masters, teachers, and loved ones of the Akashic Records um, share with us about gratitude tonight. So hello, Holly is here tonight also and saying hi to Bill. Glad you're on, Holly. So I'm just telling everyone I'm getting ready to open the Akashic Records with the Pathway Prayer. So, And so we do acknowledge the forces of light, asking for guidance, direction, and courage to know the truth as it is revealed for our highest good and the highest good of everyone connected to us. O Holy Spirit of God, help me to know myself in the light of the Akashic Records, to see myself through the eyes of the Lords of the Records, and enable me to share the wisdom and compassion that the masters, teachers, and loved ones of me have for me.
the records are now open. So let me just settle into them. The first thing that I'm getting with the Akashic Records I'm being shown is a horse race. Um, so all of the, the jockeys and the horses lined up at the starting gate and the gates open and they go flying down the, the track and the dirt is flying and you can smell it and the horses are breathing really heavy and, and the jockeys are, you know, giddy up, giddy up on their horses. And it's really interesting how this visual, this movie that I'm being shown by the masters, teachers and loved ones, how that works with gratitude and the sense that I'm getting with that vision is it's not about the finish line. It's about the journey. It's about enjoying the race. That's kind of not the purpose of a horse race, right? <laughs> you know, horses want to, you know, giddy up and get to that finish line to get the roses, to get the, the crown, to get the, the winnings, to get the purse, right? But it's about enjoying the journey along the way. Really interesting. So the way this pathway prayer process works and with the Akashic records is that I am fully conscious. Um, it is my voice speaking, but the, the images that are being presented and the information that's coming through um, is connecting to that very sacred space of the, of the Akashic records. And I'm also being shown fields of poppies, of different colored poppies. I think they come in red and I think they come in white. So I'm seeing kind of like this intermingled um, fields of poppies. And again, it's about this idea of enjoyment. And how enjoyment fits into the idea of gratitude. Um, I know all of you in the chat room that I'm seeing, especially um, are great manifestors and you understand the law of attraction and how the law of attraction helps us bring things from our desires into the fully manifested state. And what we think about and feel about is what we attract into our existence. And so by enjoying the race and enjoying the flowers and enjoying the day, we are inviting in more ways to enjoy. And again, that fits with gratitude when we are appreciating and giving thanks and being thankful and gracious and showing gratitude for what we have, bringing in more of that, more of that. Let's see what else they want to tell about gratitude. Again, they're saying it's not about the end result. It's about the way of weaving a new creation. Ooh, I like that. It's not about the end result. It's the way of weaving a new creation. And that's going to be very important in these first few weeks of 2021. I mean, We've we've taken off from from day one and it's been kind of a Mr. Toad's wild ride out there in the world. <laughs> um, I do not watch the news. Um, I don't pay attention to all that, but I you know, I know some things that have been going on and um, 
you know, I'll pop in on Twitter and Facebook and I'll see things shared. And so I, I still know what's going on in, in the world, but um, I don't immerse myself in that. So it's been a wild ride. I've seen some things that are going on. But this idea of about it's the way we weave into this new beginning of 2021, we can still use that gratitude despite what all is going on out there. Um, and I've seen some more people join us. So, Rob, can we put up some more comments here? Let's see who has joined us. Hello, Miss Tracy. I'm excited about um, doing your online uh, crystal class coming up next month. Thank you for sharing that. And I put that on my timeline. And Bill is here, too. Thank you for coming on. So we were talking about gratitude from the from the Akashic Records and weaving into our experience what we want to create and how important that is at the beginning of, of 2021. <clears throat> this week especially is a big week um, for our nation. And so I am personally using gratitude for my own freedom, for my own freedom to be a fully sovereign citizen. Um, not too long ago in history, being a woman, we were not sovereign into ourselves. No property owning, um, not having job, not having money <laughs> to call our own. So I'm a fully sovereign citizen in myself. And I'm very thankful for that. Thankful for the time that I'm living in. Thankful for being able to create opportunities um, for more sovereignty out in um, out in the world. I'm just seeing if the masters, teachers, and loved ones have any information to to bring out about that. It's interesting. What they're saying is the rule of law is gratitude. That's what balances the scales between desire and manifestation is that gratitude. So thinking, thinking of it as um, the, is it the fulcrum. So you have a seesaw and you have the little piece in the middle where it connects. I guess that's called the fulcrum. If somebody can confirm that for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. Did I get that word right? Fulcrum. Thank you. So it um, is that connection piece. So between desire on one hand and manifestation in the middle, that fulcrum is that piece called gratitude. Here, I'll put it so it's not up in my in my face. <sighs> now they're moving me into the subject that might be a little more challenging, and that is things have been really challenging out in the world, maybe in your own personal life, too. It's been Mr. Toad's wild ride for, for how long? You've had some personal challenges, financial challenges, business challenges, the ability to move around freely in your environment, um, the things that you need to do to go into the store or to go to a worship center if you are going to um, church or temple or synagogue or something like that, uh, gathering spaces and being with people. Though we've had some real life challenges out there. 
So how are we, how are we able to reach deep in and, and pull up that gratitude when we've got real challenges? Well, as I was planning this show, my spiritual team um, encouraged me to um, talk a little bit about this book. It has helped me tremendously. Um, I'm going to hold it up and I hope you can see it. Jordan B. Peterson, 12 Rules for Life, an Antidote to Chaos. Jordan B. Peterson. Dr. Jordan Peterson is a Canadian psychologist, a clinical psychologist, and also a professor at the University of Toronto. And um, he does uh, puts a lot of his lectures, um, every one of his lectures, honestly, out there on YouTube. So you might um, be able to find him, Jordan B. Peterson. But he wrote this book back in um, early 2020. It was released, 12 Rules for Life. And so how do you get to a place of gratitude which is that fulcrum point between desire and manifestation how do you get to that place when you've been lambasted by some some news that's like whoa or someone you love has passed away or you've just received a notice that oh jobs eliminated clean out your desk go home real world problems. How do you get to that space of gratitude? And so I'm going to share this little bit of 12 rules for life. Oops, I'm going to try to not get shiny on there. It's rule 12. Rule 12 says, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. That's rule 12. It's chapter 12. Pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. Now, what in the world is that about? Well, he does clear it up in his book that he's that he's not against dogs. <laughs> so he's a dog and cat person. But the um, the chapter was entitled Pet a Cat because of a neighborhood cat that um, was around his residence when his kids were um, kids were small. And he starts off the chapter talking about a very personal, sensitive subject for him. His daughter, Michaela, um, had, I think it's juvenile, um, rheumatoid arthritis it might not have been i might be getting the diagnosis incorrect but anyway from age four to age 17 she had to have her ankles and her hips replaced and was in almost constant pain So even though he's on YouTube and he's traveled the world and he has all of his lectures posted out there and he's written books and he's a psychologist. And so he talks to people who are going through actually really hard times. He has lived it. And he does go into the chapter talking about what it's like to be a parent of a child who is suffering. And, and how excruciating it is to be so helpless as a parent um, who's watching a child suffer, but says, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. And it's all about Finding the little things to enjoy 
when it gets so devastating. When the thought of one more step or or one more bill coming in or or one more disappointment is too overwhelming, set your timeline really, really small and notice the little things. It says maybe when you are going for a walk and your head is spinning, a cat will show up. And if you pay attention to it, then you will get a reminder for just 15 seconds that the wonder of being might make up for the ineradicable suffering that accompanies it. So even as a psychologist and one who helps people work through difficult, challenging emotions and places in their lives for more stability and creativity, he hasn't escaped those really hard times. So he says, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. P.S. Soon after I wrote this chapter, Michaela's surgeon told her that her artificial ankle would have to be removed and her ankle fused. Amputation waited down that road. She had been in pain for eight years. Her mobility remained significantly impaired, although both were better than before. Her she never cries in front of medical personnel. Sorry, I had to go down a little bit, but she burst into tears. When she went to see this specialist in London, the calf muscle was growing back on her damaged leg. She has much more flexion in the artificial joint. This year, she was married and had a baby girl, Elizabeth, named after my wife's departed mother. Things are good for now. So in 2020, even though Michaela, his daughter, still has pain. There are good things for her. And the pet a cat when you encounter one on the street is to encourage that idea of seeing the little things to be grateful for, like a sunset or a butterfly or I got my new glasses today. I was grateful for that. Even though I have personally had some really challenging news very, very recently. I'm thankful to be here with all of you and being part of Cosmic Conversations. So I'm going to pause right here and see what questions or comments are coming up about the Akashic Records, about gratitude about petting a cat when you encounter one on the street <laughs> tracy saying compassion yes rob saying pet a cat when she headbutts you while you're sleeping oh definitely definitely and i thought my little um my little producer on the other side of my camera was still there, but she's probably off napping. While we were getting the show set up, um, she was kind of doing laps around the computer so you see her tail or her ears walk by underneath the camera. So I'm going to take another sip of water because I've had my allergy pill today and it makes me very thirsty. going to tune in here for a second and see if the masters, teachers, and loved ones have anything else to tell us about gratitude. Oh, Holly's saying the fulcrum visual was very helpful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Ah, cats are masters with energy. That's why you want to pet one. Thank you, Bill. Yes. Yes, whenever I am in my meditation chair, um, I'll put 
like 111 hertz music on or some Reiki music, something like that. My um, personal energy buddy will jump right onto my chest and purr and want me to pet on her. No other time does she want to really have much to do with, with any of that. Not a cuddler, but when it's time for meditation, she's right there and we meditate together. So that's that's good. And she will let me pet pet her. Dicomiao. <laughs> Just like a true uh, Reiki master. Definitely. Mm. The masters, teachers, and loved ones are saying that gratitude is the mustard seed that moves mountains. Oof. That's kind of combined with, I remember this verse in the Bible in the New Testament when Jesus told the crowd that if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, and I've never personally seen a mustard seed, but I understand that it's very, very small. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, move, and the mountain will get up and move. And so the masters, teachers, and loved ones are saying that Gratitude is that mustard seed that makes the mountains move. Wow. Thank you, Bill. Can you can you put that up, um, Rob, please? What he said, Bill said, I needed the mustard seed reference. Thank you. Very, very small. You are welcome. I've never seen one. I don't know what they look like, but um, I love that. I thank the masters, teachers, and loved ones. We're heading into some more um, roller coaster times, um, specifically from a cosmic viewpoint. We have um, Mercury getting ready to go into retrograde. So we're now in the shadow period. So what does all that mean? <laughs> um, Mercury retrograde is a time for refocus, revisioning, recalibrating, um, reconfiguring, reimagining, any of those R-E words, refining. Um, and Mercury retrograde happens pretty regularly, three to four times a year. So this is the first one in 2021. And where Mercury is retrograding kind of gives us an idea of the themes that might be presenting. Mercury stands for our mental mind, um, how we think and communicate, and also how we move around in our daily environment. So if you have your um, chart handy, you can look at where um, where that is going to be. Thank you, Tracy, says powerful message. She has one taped to her mirror. Oh, a mustard seed. Awesome. As a constant reminder. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Just this tiny little seed. So Mercury is retrograding in the sign of Aquarius, the the cosmic explorer, the cosmic genius, the humanitarian, the revolutionary, the revolutionary thinker. So it's a lot of technology and growth and insight. That's what Aquarius is all about. So Mercury, our mental mind moving First forward and then backward and then back again um, in this place of technology and revolution and great cosmic genius. That's where it's going to be for these few weeks. And right now we're in the shadow period. So the shadow period means these two weeks before the actual retrograde and from an astrological standpoint 
we call that shadow period, the time in which you might be personally presented with the kinds of themes that you get to work through. You get to reimagine and you get to revision, revise and you get to refocus and you get to um, resend, you know, whatever um, in that time. So you're presented with these themes that you might actually encounter that you'll have to rework during the, the retrograde time frame. I know I've already received my own um, focus themes for, for the retrograde, kind of as a kapow, personally. Um, so I know what I'm going to be working on. But if you find where Aquarius is in your own astrological chart, that can kind of help you with the, with the themes. And let's see if the um, masters, teachers, and loved ones have anything to share about that. Okay, they're reminding me that um, Aquarius is called the water bearer. So there's actually the story of Ganymede, who was this beautiful human being. And Zeus, the god Zeus, the god of the heavens, just really was enamored with this beautiful Ganymede. And so Zeus kind of kidnapped him from earth and brought him up to the heavens to be the cup bearer for the king. So he instantly graduated from human to the upper realms, but he's not a god. He's still a human. So he no longer fits in with the human beings, but he doesn't quite fit in with the gods. So having to reconcile a new station in life. That's the message that, that wants to be uh, put forward. So in this new year time, Each of us may be asked to demonstrate and step into a new station. So what do I mean by that? So let's say you are a person who has been used to um, more kind of sitting on the sidelines and, and cheering on um, from afar. But this time you're going to be asked to stand on stage and maybe play the guitar for the first time in front of people when normally you just kind of play maybe around the campfire, but now you're going to be actually in front of people and you're going to be asked to shine your light and step up and do that. Or maybe you are a healer and you've just been kind of doing it on the side, but maybe this time you're going to be asked to step into that professionally and instead of that being your side job is going to be your full time full attention i don't know what that's going to be for you but that's the message that's coming forward from the masters teachers and loved ones that we will be asked to step into a new role r-o-l-e and it feels very big. It feels like as I'm sitting here, I, a big wave is like pushing me forward. I've ever been in the ocean and, and um, you know, feeling a big wave in your back. It's like I want to <laughs> go right into the camera. It's just this wave coming through of being asked to step forward. Ooh. So thank you for that. And so I'm going to open it up now as a time for um, many messages. And if anybody would like a card, I'm going to be pulling cards tonight from the Mythic Goddess Tarot. Um, if you are familiar with the artist 
uh, Catherine Skaggs. I know that she visited the um, the Temple Within a couple years ago to do some soul portraits and, and to do um, a workshop up there. So this is her artwork. And I'm going to be using just the major arcana portion of the deck, just the, the soul cards. So we have a, a little better understanding of what we can, um, the energies that we can use to help us be propelled forward into this new this new job that we're asked to do. It feels really exciting, but it feels really, really big at the same time. So um, I'm going to ask Rob to put up our, our first um, card message, please. Ah, Trace is saying Lemurian love. <laughs> And we will start with Miss Tracy. And the way it works for me is I shuffle until the card that is for you kind of pops out. So if I'm looking down, I'm shuffling and waiting for that card to, to pop out. Ah. And here we go for you, Miss Tracy. That is the Sophia. And that's the card numeral five the wise woman. Oh, I know this is you on so many levels. And what I'm being drawn to here in this card is the womb. So many things being birthed for you this year after, after the period of composting and the period of fertilizing so many things are going to be conceived and coming together and so it's it's about asking you to be ready to receive them like having your basket open ready to receive them Ooh, it just feels so good mm. There you are, Miss Tracy. <clears throat> Thank you all for bearing with me with my throat tonight. And Miss Mary Summers, I'm shuffling for your card here. Ah. This is Aditi. This is a Hindu goddess. And this is called, this is card numeral 20. The Great Void. And in the standard tarot deck, we would call that the judgment card. It, the message, though, is about calling what you want to out of the cosmic primordial soup of creation, kind of like getting into your own personal vortex. What do you want to create? And I'm, I'm being shown fire, doing fire ceremonies. What I like to do is um, I call them write and burn. So, I'll get a paper and I'll write down some things that I'm ready to release from my life. And then I'll also get another paper and write down some things that I want to bring into my life or see in full fruition. And so I just get quiet then and I might say a little prayer. I'll call in my angels, ancestors and allies and I'll go outside. Um, and light a little candle, and then I light the papers on fire, let them burn out completely, watch them burn all the way through, and then I know that my prayers have been heard. It's instant alchemy, and that's what fire does. 
because the paper is no more. It's turned to ash and turned to smoke, but that smoke is the prayer that goes right up to heaven. So it's about really alchemizing your desires. Thank you, Mary, for tuning in tonight. I appreciate that. And we have Ellen. All right, Ellen. Your card is Sophia, the wise woman. Now, we may have some repeats tonight on the cards, and that's okay because um, I'm using just the 22 cards of the Major Arcana, and these are soul messages. So if another soul card comes through for someone, it's A-OK. -okay. I promise I'm shuffling, and the, the one that comes out is supposed to be for you. So the Sophia wisdom, that wise woman. It's time for you to accept your inner wise woman. And I'm also being shown a pendulum. So um, I'm going to invite you to look into getting an Isis pendulum. It's a very special kind of pendulum called an Isis pendulum. I know they have some um, on Amazon. You can also probably find them in, in different stores, but an Isis pendulum. And um, really getting into some dowsing. And I'm also being told about um, medical intuition. And maybe that's tying into the dowsing. So there is your message for tonight. Thank you, Alan, for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Who is next? Marie is here. Happy Monday. Beautiful message and would like a card. Absolutely. Let me shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And the card that is your card for you. Aha. Here we have the goddess Pele. Ooh. Awesome. And that is, yeah, 16. Pele is the purifier. Pele is the maker of worlds, right? All of that hot lava magma bubbling under Grandmother Earth comes up and out over the islands and creates new life. So her sacred alchemy is brand new life. It's time to fire up your engines. And I'm I'm being um, I'm being told to tell you to really spend some time on the sacral chakra, the creative center. Get those. Get that boiling, bubbling brook moving down there for some uh, creative energy. And feel free to use some of that sexual energy for um, creating what you want. Get a little saucy and get a little sassy and get a little sexy there with creating what you want. Drawing upon the sacral. That is for you tonight, Marie. Thank you for tuning in. Who is next tonight? Jackie is here and she would like a mini message. Absolutely. Let me let me get your now I'm being told to shuffle in like the the blackjack dealer way. <laughs> All right. Okay, this one is Kali. It's about taking out the trash. It's time to take out the trash. Um, the death card in um, the standard tarot deck. 
something has expired. It's, it's past its prime, like expired milk. It's time to go. You can recycle that milk carton, but it can't stay in your house anymore. It can't stay in your body anymore. It can't stay in your field anymore. It's time to take out the trash. That might be relationships that have passed their prime. It might be um, jobs. It might be actual things. I'm being drawn to your closet. So maybe there's something tucked back in there that you used to do kickboxing, but now that's no longer you. So the kickboxing equipment can be passed along to somebody else, or maybe it's ski pants or something along those lines. Something, it, it's time to um, let it go. So thank you. Thanks for tuning in, Jackie. And who else do we have? Miss Holly. It's been a long time since I've seen you, Miss Holly. Oh, I love this. Oh, I'm trying to not get a glare. You zoomy. She's having a gay old time, isn't she? This correlates to the fool in the tarot deck, but Yuzumi is a Japanese goddess who, through delight and enchantment, coaxed the goddess of the sun out of her dark cave so she will shine, shine, shine. So it's time for you to dance around in your joy and shine, shine, shine. Now, I mean, if you if you want to dance around for real with your music turned up, that's fine. But it's it's more of really getting into the spirit of joy. And you might um, think about. Well, I'm being shown the solar plex. And I wonder if you've ever heard of laugh, laughing yoga or laughter yoga really stimulating that diaphragm, kind of like a massage for your insides, or turning on a, a comedy movie and, and getting that joy right there in the solar plexus. And then that'll just ripple out into your life, Miss Holly. There you are. Thank you for tuning in tonight. And who is next? Miss Pat. I miss your beautiful face. You and your cowboy hat. Ah, here we have Morgan Le Fay. Correlates to the magician and the regular tarot deck or the sorceress. Think of of it as tapping into source, tapping into universe, tapping into the divine as the conduit to pull into full manifestation. So it's that whole ask and ye shall receive. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, it can and will be. And you can ask for a dollar as easily as you can ask for a million dollars. That's the message that I'm hearing there. Mm. Ask and you shall receive. And be ready when it comes. You know, there's this Christmas song about this kid that wants a hippopotamus for Christmas. Right? Only a hippopotamus will do. Well, asking for that hippopotamus, he needs a place to stay. <laughs> so it's all about be ready when it comes. Because it will be delivered. Maybe it'll be in a Big Mac truck. Maybe it'll be a postcard in the mail. Whatever it is, it's going to, it's going to arrive. 
and it needs its place to stay. So get ready. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you, Miss Pat. Oh, Bill, I would love to pull a card for you. Interesting. You also have the goddess Kali, death. And what I'm seeing here is the dance of death. What does that mean? Um, it's a very special honoring ceremony. Like an initiation for what am I seeing here? It's an initi it's an initiatory honoring ceremony of some kind of energy healing, energy practice. And I see you leading it, you facilitating it as well as participating. It's very shamanic. Some super high powered, you know, if you ask for the moon, it's going to be delivered right to your doorstep kind of stuff. It's like big mover and shaker. Be ready to accept this new mantle. I see you with your arms straight out and being presented with this mantle, with this, with this cloth, with this special garment, this new mantle being receiving through a special initiation. Wow. Very, very sacred. That's what I'm seeing for you for this year. May, June. May or June. Hmm. Interesting. I'd love to hear about that. You are welcome. Anybody else? Oh, Tracy, tears. Thank you. You are welcome. Mary, you are welcome. Uh, Marie made you giggle. Yeah, get sassy. Uh, Holly's saying solar plexus has been a little tired lately. Thank you. You are welcome, dear. You're welcome. Jackie says, thank you, Julie. I love Kali and started clearing out this weekend. Your message is confirmation. That I'm doing exactly what I need to be doing right now. Appreciate the message and gratitude this evening. You are welcome. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate you being here. Um, Pat says, "You, thank you. You are welcome. And you are welcome, Bill. I appreciate you. And did we get everybody on the messages tonight? We got everybody on the messages tonight. Except for you. Would you like one, Rob? I normally get one after the show. But okay. if you want to do one on, on there, that's fine, too. Well, I will talk with you after the broadcast then. Thank you all for joining me for another wonderful evening. I get such a rush to be part of Cosmic Conversations and to see all of you. So I'm very, very glad that you have been with me and are continuing to be part of Cosmic Conversations in 2021. So from my heart to yours, big cosmic love to you all. Mwah. Oh, thank you, Holly. Yeah, I got my new glasses today. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Mwah.